Hey guys, how's it going? So I got a lot of requests to do a bit of a deep dive into the ScreenPad Plus, AKA the second screen, to go through all of his features, and that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I wanna say is that this is essentially just a secondary screen. No different if you were to connect your laptop to an external monitor. The only thing that this is built in, and it's half of a 15 inch screen at the bottom. You can move windows up and down, and as I pointed out, out in my first video, Asus's built-in software allows you to easily snap it into place. So you can easily snap it from the top to the bottom. So when it's on the top, you see these two lines at the bottom here? You can actually tell whether you want it to snap it to the left, the middle, or to the right, or if you want to take up two thirds of the screen like this here. But if you have a mouse, you can easily just throw it at the bottom and then you can just use the regular Windows snapping feature. And if you use Windows snapping feature, then you can resize it in a way that you would expect. Okay, so everything that we've seen so far is built into Windows. It's the same kind of functionality you'll get when you plug in any external monitor. But Asus has built in their own custom software, and one of those is the control center, which is this little icon to the left here. So when you click on it, or touch it, it is a touch screen after all. It is a touch screen after all, so you can fully interact with this entire control center by touch, which is cool. So I'll just go through them one by one. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna use my mouse just so my fingers aren't in the way as I'm showing you. So the, the on the top left, you have your brightness slider, um, fairly straightforward. And the next item is task swap. All that does is essentially take what's in the main screen and then it switches it with the bottom screen. So tapping, so, so either clicking on it or tapping on it will essentially just do just that. So now um, Microsoft Edge is at the bottom and Armor Recreate is on the top. And if I hit the task swap, it'll just switch it around. That's all that does. So that could be fairly useful and I do use that. Um, the next one is a, is a touchpad. So you can actually bring up an on-screen touchpad and this really does make up for the tiny trackpad that I've been kind of complaining about on this laptop. One issue with using this on-screen touchpad is you are not able to interact with anything on the bottom screen and even, and, and I pointed this out in my first video, um, when you bring the mouse cursor down, you can actually see it in the second screen. So while it's useful for in the pinch, when you want to use the, the main screen, um, it's fine, but it obviously isn't perfect. I, I think this laptop is best used with the mouse. So this one is called App Navigator. When you tap or click on this, it brings up a menu of every single app you have open and depending on which screen it's on. So if it's in the bottom screen, it'll show up here. If it's in the top screen, it'll show up here. What, what you can essentially do is you can drag to the bottom screen, or you can just tap on this arrow here and bring it up to the top screen and vice versa. So you can have a whole bunch of apps open and you might have a particular workflow. Once you're done, you just hit the back button and then it automatically configures it all. And th there's a few others that you can add, but these are the main ones. So next here you have, essentially it's a app launcher, but for the bottom screen. So the way this is supposed to work is if you launch an app from this particular app launcher here, it should only open up on the bottom screen regardless of anything. So if I open up Battle.net, it should theoretically open up in the bottom screen, but it doesn't seem to always work. Only certain apps. The um, So if I open up Edge, as you can see, it tried to open up in the, in the main screen, but then it snapped it down to the bottom screen. Because the way Windows works, even if you try to launch an app from the secondary screen, it'll still just always open on the top screen. So... The point of this particular app launcher is to try to get it to only open up on the bottom screen. So when you open up Lightroom, it's supposed to automatically open up these controls here on the second screen. And if not, there's a program called Screen Expert where you can set it up, enable it, and you could actually customize all of these different sliders or buttons here. So I've been kind of leaving it at the default and I've been kind of liking it too. And I've showed I, I've, I've showed me using this in some of my other videos, but you can adjust the contrast, the exposure, 
the blacks. And, and like I said, there's specific settings for each of the Adobe suite. On Adobe Premiere though, you can, you can actually set up different macros or use like different shortcuts, which does help. So you can, so it, it makes it easier to do some, some of the stuff. And like I said, you could actually go in there and customize all of these different buttons by just hitting settings. And then there's, and, and you, you to, to your heart's content. So here in the screen expert app, you can actually go in and configure the different screens for each program. And if this is something you're into, this might, this might make the duo useful for you. But to be honest, um, I've been using it very minimally. What I actually do enjoy using with Lightroom CC though, is actually having my grid at the bottom. So I can choose any photo I want. And then from there, I can start doing all of my edits. So typically without that, you would have to, would be at the bottom of the main screen and you kind of have to cycle through them. But it's really nice to have all of your different images that you want to look at to start editing right here in the corner. And I have found that to be very, very useful. So I, I end up using the grid hit on this on the screen pad plus when i'm using lightroom cc a lot more than i do with using the screen expert with the specific controls okay so the last thing i want to touch on which is why most of you guys are probably here is how does this actually work with gaming unfortunately i don't use the screen pad plus when i'm gaming you end up losing a lot of performance and windows just isn't designed properly for it there is one game that supports it, which is Dying Light 2, and I'll show you that. But other than that, I don't use it. And the good thing is there is a dedicated button to turn on and off the screen pad plus. So you press it once to hide it. And then you press it again to actually disable it. So now Windows isn't even recognizing the screen pad plus. So usually when I'm gaming, that's what I'm doing. But for the purposes of demonstrating to you here, I'll just turn it back on. All right, so now that I have the game loaded up, I have the map on the bottom screen and I'm playing on the top screen. So in this particular title, I didn't notice much of a frame rate drop. Based off of the settings I have here, I'm getting between 60 and 68 FPS. And that was about the same. Um, as to whether whether the screen was on or off. Using the second screen becomes a little bit more CPU intensive. So if you're playing a competitive shooter or sorts, you might end up losing enough performance to where it's, notice, to where it's noticeable. But for this particular title, it still runs incredibly great. Um, I'm only recording at 30 FPS, so you're not able to see what I'm seeing. Obviously, I don't have, con I can't, I, obviously I can't use my mouse to go to the second screen to look at the map and zoom in and stuff. So naturally you might be thinking, all right, let me use the touch screen. Let me just go in there and I zoom, oh, nope, gone. And so you, got, you have to alt tab to get it back up. So every single time you interact with the second screen, it takes you out of it. So then you have to alt tab to get back. Let me know in the comments if this is a deal breaker for you. I'd rather just use my iPad on the side or use my phone and be able to access everything that way. This is a, this really does take me out of the experience. I. I am not really as immersed when I have to keep on out tabbing to get back to the game. And the way pricing works with this particular laptop is you can get an equivalent device that performs the same and also be able to buy an iPad or a Galaxy Tab. And you'll, you'll honestly end up with a better experience if you're primarily focused on using this while gaming. So I I just don't think that this is a great device for gaming. And it's not Asus's fault. It's Windows. It's the way Windows is designed. So it's something that they're going to have to fix on their own. Will they fix it? I don't know. I've, I've been having so many bugs with Windows 11 in general that I still haven't seen fix since I upgraded around the time when it came out. So... I hate to say it, but if you were really looking forward to the duo for gaming, I I personally don't recommend it. It's not enough of a smooth experience for me to want to use it. So 
my biggest recommendation is just to take off the second screen and then just use that amazing Nebula display with the HDR and with the thousand nits and with the multi-zone mini LEDs. But when a game does support it, and the only one that supports it right now is Dying Light 2. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire that one up. On the ScreenPad Plus, you can actually view your inventory. So you can actually switch from your, you can actually switch different weapons using this. Unfortunately, like I said, because I just started the game, I only have this bat and I can go to unarmed and you can go to your different quests and you can, I'm assuming that you'll be able to select different quests. You can read on the, you can read on the different quests. So like you can fully interact with the touch screen and there's some other activities you could do on the screen pad plus. I can imagine in racing games, having the map on the bottom, or if you're a mobile player, having some of the abilities right up on screen and having them lit up and making them easily visible when the, when the cooldowns run out and probably even being able to initiate them by touching the screen. So I think there's a lot of cool things that they could do in the future. But Asus is the only one doing this, and this is a niche product. I can't imagine there being wide support for this ScreenPad Plus. But it's something to hope for in the future. So that kind of concludes my experience with the secondary screen. It's very useful as a secondary screen, but it might not be exactly what you had in mind, especially when it comes to gaming. And it, it's really nice having the second screen and it's nice just opening it up and not having to deal with carrying around an iPad or a tablet or a secondary monitor, which all of them just really suck. Just having this right available to you is really useful, but I just wanted to make this video to make sure that you keep your expectations leveled. And with that being said, let me know if you guys want me to cover anything else in the duo. I'm about done with it. I'm, I'm, I mean, not, in the sense that I have all the products that I want to look at. I, I want to work on a review of the GE67 with the OLED screen. I want to try to get in the MSI GT77. I have a Legion 7 coming in. So I have a lot of stuff coming my way. So if you guys like this content, please like and get subscribed. And that'll be all. Thanks, guys. Bye.